everyone and welcome to chair interval training brought to you by community access yellow springs and the yellow springs senior center and me lynn hardman silver sneakers flex instructor and um just a couple reminders before we get started before you begin this exercise program or any exercise program please consult your physician and if you feel dizzy or unbalanced at any time, you can remain in your chair and get plenty of good exercise there or return to your chair. So to that, we'll need a sturdy chair. And today we're going to be using a rubber ball and a rubber band. All right. So this kind of elastic tubing is usually made out of latex, but you can find it in non-latex if you have allergies. Here's an example of a non-latex product. Ta-da! I just like to show off the colors. Um, also, we'll be needing water. So have some of that handy. And it's August. Can you believe it? We've been uh, exercising together now since April. And um, anyway, it's been my pleasure to have this opportunity to be with you virtually. Remember, keep it safe and simple. If anything hurts, go back to the last movement that didn't hurt, or substitute your own favorite movement, or take a rest. We're gonna play some music to just keep us on beat. Wait a minute, I learned a trick. You have to use this button. All right, so the goal of this exercise class in general is to really make our movements easier. If it made things harder, that would be pointless. So to that, I have three very important rules. Number one rule is to have fun. If you follow that rule, you won't have to worry about rule number two or three. Rule number two is to keep breathing. Because it's no fun to stop for very long, right? And rule number three is please, no falling aloud, because that's not fun either. Okay. Besides, if you have a little bit of fun during parts of your exercise, you'll be more motivated to do it again and again. And the best exercise on this planet Earth is the one you do regularly. So, all right, use your best posture because it'll make our movements easier and our breathing easier. Let's just practice breathing in at our own pace. Ideally, breathing in through your nose and exhaling through your mouth. But if you're stopped up in your head, it works through your mouth as well. If your shoulders feel fine, you can go a little higher. If they don't feel fine, you can go a little low. <laughs> you already knew that. I'm trusting you to listen to your body because every day is a different day. And viva la France. All right, I want to preview a couple of patterns, but before we do, let's just ease into some greater range of motion with the shoulders and the hips. I'm going to come behind my chair. I would appreciate it if you were checking your area around your chair. Make sure there's nothing to slip, trip, or fall on. Get a nice, wide, sturdy hip width or chair width base and just try a little mini squat. You can rock side to side and lift your shoulder up towards your ear. See how that feels. Everything A okay? You can start to roll it back. Larger, if you please. Just ease into it. You can go at your own pace. You can go half speed. It's up to you. All right, rolling backward felt fine. Let's open and close those shoulders and chest. Sometimes you can pat yourself on the back. Or maybe your shoulder isn't happy to go that far. All right. Ah, 
and see how it feels just to march it out. Now we'll preview a couple patterns. We've done this one a couple of times before, but it's been a while. I call it skate, fly. You'll need to be behind your chair so you can use it as your balance check. But just so you can see what I'm doing with my feet, I'm going to come out front here. I'll start slow. You're welcome to go at that pace. And then we'll speed it up if you like. But we're just going to take our right foot and cross back, left foot and cross back. So it looks like we're ice skating. This is slow. Let's try the tempo, if you like. You can do it little or big, but we're just warming up. So this is our skating. We'll try just eight of those. Eight, seven, six, five, four more, then we're gonna fly. Two and one, and when we fly, we just lift our heels up, lift the crown of our head up. I'm getting too close to the camera. Anyway, we'll do eights of those, and then we'll go back to fours, and then down to twos, and eventually it'll look like this. Skate, fly, skate, fly, skate, fly. And then we might play around with threes, or threes, and work on balance. So that's one pattern. Hopefully, you were behind your chair and safe and using it as you need it. Here's the other pattern, which is more about agility and coordination, but that also was. We're going to just march, two, three, lift. That's how it sounds. March, two, three, lift your knee. So one, two, three, lift. March, two, three, lift. Simple, but maybe not so easy. We've got our chair there right in our next to our body so we can use it if we feel wobbly. This is at tempo. What if we made it a little bit faster and kept those steps super tight and a little lower to the ground so we can get our feet down when we need it. Last two times at tempo. Let's go fast. So one, two, three, lift. One, two, three, lift. One, two, three. You can make it. or lift it up high, but quick feet, right? And we're just warming up, so let's slow it back down and march it out. So, how'd that feel? Doing good so far? We're gonna sit down and continue to warm up with some dynamic stretching, but before you sit down, it's our first of many opportunities to do what? Did I hear you say squat? <laughs> we do squat. All right. Make sure your heels are close to your chair. Maybe you can feel it with the backs of your legs. As you hinge your hips back and keep your head up. Try not to let your knees knock together. Feel the floor with all 10 toes and your heels. Breathe and get seated whenever you're ready. This is the first time of many, hopefully. I can, um, Remind you to take your time. Step to the side, engage your abdominal muscles to support your spine. Then you step to the side and lean to the side to get a sip of water. I think I started to say, um, we do use a scale from one to 10 to gauge our perceived exertion. One being the lowest intensity and 10 being the highest. Well, neither one of those are desirable. We're going to shoot for the fun range of four to seven. It's okay if you're a two or a three or you're an eight, but try to get the bulk of your uh, aerobic activity in that range of between, oh, I feel great, I can tell I'm exercise, and um, I still feel good, but I'm not sure how much longer I can do this. That would be like a seven, okay? All right, sitting tall at the edge of your seat. Ah, let's take a deep breath and open our chest. 
and take an exhale and close. And in general, that type of breathing is very useful, especially when we do our strength work. Inhale when shoulders and chest and spine open. Exhale as we close the space that our lungs occupy. It just makes sense. Okay, sit tall. Let's warm up our toes just with a little tap. Lift those toes and take them out and in. And let's add some jazz hands to it. Good articulating through your shoulders. Keeping those toes up off the floor. But you're probably starting to feel it in your shins, so let's just go back and tapping our heels. Good. And taking our heels out and in. And then elbows. Maybe some little funky chicken arms. Just warm it up. Having fun. Four, three, two. Sitting tall at the edge of our seat. Buckle up your safety belt. And stretch out your right leg. And then your left. Another tempo I like. Let's see. Here. And here. Hopefully, we're all together now. Push with the opposite arm. And if you're not on beat with me, that's okay. Just keep moving. If it feels good, contract those strong, long leg muscles and stick your sole out in here. Good. We're going to try a little wave with our foot and our hand. Let's try with the right foot and the left hand. And then opposites. <laughs> that feels funny. Oops, I'm slumping in my chair. Are you slumping out there? I hope not. Sit tall. Oh, this is tricky. I'm not sure I want to do any more. How about you? <laughs> Sit tall. Let's stretch through that hamstring back in the leg. How do you do today? I'm fine, thank you. I hope you're fine. Lift those toes and fingers to develop that stretch at the back of the leg. Ah, and then push like you're pushing on pedal. Sit tall, pull the navel in like you're zipping up tight pants. But breathe. And then circle at the ankle joint. One direction and the other. All right, let's see if we can stretch out that left leg. Sitting tall. When I say buckle up your safety belt, I mean contract those abdominals. Brace in the belly as if someone's going to bop you and brace with your arm. So you can support your spine as you hinge oh, about halfway forward towards your lap. Lifting those toes and fingers. The stretches should feel good. You should feel them, but they should never hurt. Remember, if you have any sharp, sudden shooting pain, that can stop. Go back to the last thing that felt good. Soothe your body. Pull the navel in. Draw that knee toward the chest and draw circles with your ankle. Now, some of you might not like this position with the hip flexed, so you can circle your ankle down there, and then the other way. Woo, okay. I feel a little bit more ready to move. I hope you do too. Remember, you can always remain or return to your chair. We're gonna shoot for about 10 minutes of skating and flying. Now, this can be as vigorous as you want it to be or as gentle as you want it to be. And it might be good to take some rolling hills of slightly more vigorous, slightly less vigorous intervals. Your heart will get stronger for it. I want to show you, while I encourage you, those of you who want to stand up, just come right behind your chair. But I want to show you first that it can be done in your chair and it will get your heart rate up. So, if you're in your chair, you gotta be right at the edge of your seat. And we'll start out super slow. You guys that are standing up too. All right? We're gonna take that right leg, cross, back, left, and right. Good. And then, 
four more, slow, three, two, one. Now fly slow. Fly. Those of you who are standing get to work on your balance. Now four more, slow, and then we'll try that same thing in tempo. You ready to skate for eight? At tempo. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Now fly. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Now skate for eight. I'm going to transition to my feet, but you stay where you're at. Four, three, two, and fly. Whee! Four, three, two, now skate. You can get low as you like. Four more, three, two, now fly. So we've been working in eights. Four more, three, two, skate for four, three, two, fly for four. Got it? Skate. You can get lower or high. Fly, four, three, two, skate. Good, last set of four. Now skate for two, two here. And fly two. I'm gonna get behind my chair. You guys keep on dancing. We're doing this pattern. Two of each, right? Good. Two skates, two flies, last set of twos. Now we're going to break it down. Skate and fly. So down and up. You can use your chair. You can make it little or you can make it big. Whee! Just four more like that. Four, three, and get ready to freeze. Two, one, freeze. Got your chair there? Woo! Now let's freeze in our skate position. See if you can blow that toe in the air, knowing you can put it down or grab that chair. Woo! Stand up, march it out. How'd that feel? On a scale of one to ten, did you get to our fun, happy zone of four to seven? And if you're not there yet, you get to choose whether you want to do it again. In your chair or in the air, but we'll do it beginning with our left leg this time. All right, so make sure your area is still free and clear stuff. I'm going to come out front again just because I can. Hopefully I'm not cutting off my head too much. All right, so your left foot's going to begin this pattern slow, eight times. Eight, seven, six, five, four. If you're in your chair, sit tall. Two more. One, fly slow. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. We're going to skate to tempo now. Here we go. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, fly. Eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, skate. You can get low and it's hard work on those legs. Good, now fly. You can come up to the ball of your foot and raise that heart rate. Four more, three, two, one more set of eights. Good, four, three, two, and fly. Four more, three, two, skate for four, four, whoops, <laughs> fly, four, three, two, skate, Whew. this is pretty aerobic, fly, skate, last set of fours, fly, cut it down to two, two here, Two here, good. Two here, two here. Now you're behind your chair and I'm gonna get there with you, okay? 
because we need to have that assistive device. So I'm going to work my way back there. Good, last set of twos. You ready to break it down? Down and up. Down and up. Skate and fly. Four. Three, get ready to freeze. Two. Freeze, woo! Can you do it without your chair? And in the skate position. Ooh. Awesome, march it out. How are you doing now? Good, I hope. A little closer to that happy zone. Let me see where we are with our music. Da, 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 da. Yay! Okay. It is time to transition to our chair. And as we do that, it gives us the, this natural opportunity to do our best body weight strength exercise squats. I'm going to suggest you do between one sitting down slow to get to your chair safely to as many as ten. You get to the side. But do put your feet close to the chair in case your knee buckles or your hips give out or you just feel like I don't want to do any more. Ideally, keeping your head up as if there's an imaginary glass of water there and your hips are hinging back. Also ideal is weight stays equal in both feet and that the knees don't float in towards one another. Also ideal is getting your booty back on the way down slow and controlled and then up and tucked under on the way up with power. That's enough for me, thank you very much. I'm thirsty. How about you? Take your time as you get step to the side, brace with your abdominal muscles and your arm. It really does help to just kind of decide mindfully to slow down when you're getting things down low and shifting the position of your head quickly because sometimes that can throw us into a little dizzy spell or a vertigo much worse. There's a difference, you know. Vertigo is when the whole room feels like it's spinning and you're having an inner ear episode. Dizziness is more of a lightheadedness. Here's to not having either. I only mention that because I had vertigo and then I had a procedure that involved no medicine and it really helped me. Um, so talk to your doctor about that. And especially if you're having recurring dizziness or a change in your medication. Very important. So. Let's see, I guess I would like to use our band first. So let's grab that. Either the tubing or the band, both will work. By the way, uh, back in April, let's see, April, May, June, July, you know, like five months ago, I offered some of these. Well, some of you took me up on it, but I still have a few left. So, you know, talk to your friends if they want some. I, they're just taking up space in my garage, okay? We're going to do some lat pull downs, sitting at the back of our chair with our heels close to the chair will permit us, should we choose, to do a squat with these lat pull downs. But you want to grab the tube about shoulder width apart, keep your wrists nice and straight, and start by reaching on a diagonal kind of up where the ceiling meets the wall and pull tension between your hands. Stretch that tube as you squeeze your shoulder blades behind you and then reach up straightening at the elbow, pull down bending at the elbow and squeezing your shoulder blades back. Good. Go at your own comfortable controlled pace and please inhale, exhale, repeat. Keep the tension on your tube. This is one of two sets we're going to do. So I'm going to stay in my chair, but on the second set, if you 
wanted to, you could do some squatting with this. If you're already doing it, good for you. You know you. Challenge yourself, but do it safely. We always want the benefits of our exercise to outweigh the risks. And the only person who knows about that is you. I'm going to do one more high quality, retract those shoulder blades and pulse as we breathe in through your nose, ah, out through your mouth. Ooh, ah, I can feel that. That was strengthening our upper back muscles, our rear deltoids, and our biceps. Mmm, felt that. Alright, let's do the opposing upper body muscles. If you like. You can, again, be well back in your chair. This time, bring your feet together. We'll have an option to do a leg extension, but it's an option. First, let's set up to do the chest press with the proper amount of challenge or resistance. You can grab closer to your shoulder joint to get more resistance. See how that feels? If you don't like the amount of resistance, you can do a little less or a little more. Remember, the further away your hands are from your shoulders, when you start the exercise, the easier it will be. Closer to your shoulders, harder. So we're going to exhale and close our chest. It's not just the straightening of the elbows here. I want you to bring your shoulders together in front and then open them in the back. We are intentionally bending our elbows at the back so that we can straighten them and involve and strengthen those triceps. Now, if you want, you can add an outstretched right leg and left. Try to lift and pull the navel in towards your spine. And when I say lift, I mean straightening the leg at the knee and lifting your lap or your the back of your leg ever so slightly off of your seat. It may not even leave your seat, but you know, you can feel those quadriceps contracting and getting stronger. Whew. I'm running out of gas here. How about you? Let's try. One more with a little pulse on the right. Four, three, two, and left. Four, three, two. Ooh. Oh, I felt that. So, when we did the leg extensions, it was strengthening these long quadriceps and hip flexors and a little bit of the abdominals. And the chest press is for your chest, front through your shoulders, and triceps. Yeah. Okay, as promised, second set of lat pull downs. If you want to change your angle to be a little bit more horizontal on this one, great. If you choose to add squats, must have your feet near those chair legs. I was setting up to do more chest presses. Silly me. This is how you start. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so I'm going to reach out on horizontal and row, squeezing those shoulder blades together. If I choose to squat and my hands are forward, my hips are back. If you choose to squat, your elbows are back while your hips are tucked under. You don't have to go all the way down, but do your best. Use your full, safe, comfortable range of motion that challenges you without sharp, sudden shooting pain. This is a great total body exercise. It's also great if you're seated and you're doing the exercise. Or let's say you have a shoulder problem and you're just doing the squats. That's also very beneficial. But this is a good time to take a rest. Hang up that tube. Tuck it where it's going on your feet. Let's get another sip of water. Step to the side, lean to the side. Okay, we're going to change the focus back to one of aerobic and agility. It also involves a little bit of balance, 
a little bit of coordination, and a lot of brain power, okay? When we do the ABCs, agility, balance, and coordination, this type of pattern where we're moving different parts of our body are very great for our cognitive health because we're getting fresh oxygen and that blood's flowing, and that's great. A little bit of aerobic activity every day is wonderful. And I've heard from some of you say, like, oh, you're doing a new dance routine while you're cleaning the house, or you're going out for a, a daily walk with your friend, and you're talking while walking, which is also neuroplasticity or cognitive training. You just got to watch your step and keep your physical distance. Or, when you can't keep your physical distance, wear your mask. Outdoors is the safest place. All right, what were we doing? Oh, agility. So sit tall if you're in your chair. Those of you who want to stand up, come on over here to the left side, please. I'm going to show in the chair once. For those of you who want to be there, I want you to know you're right. Okay? For those of you who know that you want to stand, take your time to get over here. This pattern sounds like march, two, three, lift. March, two, three, lift. With a little knee. If you're standing, recheck. Double check, triple check your area. Make sure there's nothing under your feet. Your ball rolled around or your little cat or dog wandered under your feet. Use your best posture and make sure you can always touch your chair. So if you guys are on the left, you're going to be able to touch the chair with your right. One, two, three, lift. That lift can be big. Arms overhead always adds to the uh, cardio output or that challenge to strengthen your heart and lungs. Hey, this works great in the chair. One, two, three. I'm going to transition to the air. Wherever you are, just keep moving. Good. Step, two, three, lift. Step, two, three, lift. I don't even get here where I can touch my chair. You can add a little skippity do it off if you like. Come up to the ball of your foot. That'll make it a little more aerobic. We're going to do four more. Three at tempo. Two. Then we're going to make our steps small and fast. Here we go. Step two, three, lift. Step two, three. One, two, three, lift. Are you getting it? I hope so. You can fake it and just pump those legs. The pattern is good, and getting that rhythm is also another brain trainer. Pumping your arms in opposition will add to your heart rate. How about four more? Four, three, two, one. March it out. How are you doing? On our scale of one to 10, how do you feel? Use an adjective that starts with A. Did anybody say, awesome, or um, aerobic? <laughs> I couldn't think of anything. All right, well, if you want to do it again in the air, let's get behind our chair and use a different part of our body. If you want to return to your chair, you're right. But get yourself where you want to be. Use that chair. Make sure at all times you, you can touch it. We're going to try this, walk our feet out to a hip width or wide, and start with that mini squat, okay? Just kind of stay low to engage your hips and your thighs. And when we march it out on the march two, three lift, we're going to stay lowish and wideish. And then we'll do a hamstring curl instead of a knee lift. Ready? Here we go. March two, three lift. So intentionally stay low. Stay a little wide and use a little bit more of your hips and thighs. Good. March, two, three, lift. Hmm. I had my arms going all wonky. Let's do it. Hmm. March, two, three, lift. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that little sailor shrug or whatever they call this sailor dance. Or for those of you who like Zumba, you'll see this in Zumba. So, march, two, three, lift. You can get 
get up high and down low. But just keep it nice and gentle. March to three lift. Let's do four more at tempo. And this one's gonna be hard to do faster. Two more at tempo. Stay low. Here we go. March to three lift. You gotta kick those heels up. One, two, three. One, two, three. Are you breathing? A little huffy puffy? Can you talk? You should always be able to talk while exercising. Maybe not like, you know, an oratory speech, but a few words like, are we done yet? How about four more? Four, three, two, march it out. Woo! I got to a seven-ish, eight-ish on that one to ten perceived exertion scale. Hey, but let's do it again. This time, over here on the right side, with a nice tallish posture, we're not going to go super fast, but we're going to use our rear musculature and try to keep the body tall. Try not to lean forward with this hip extension. Stay where you're at. I'm going to turn the side so you can see what I mean. We're going to just do a hip extension, but keep that head stretching to the ceiling. So march to three, lift. Lift. You could use that opposite arm or same side or both. Remember, arms overhead will raise your heart rate. You can come up to the ball of your foot, but don't donkey kick or thrust into an arched back. Pull that navel in. Pick up. Up, up, and away. Squeeze your glutes, keep your knees straight. How are you doing? If this hurts your lower back, you can just tap it back. I'll show you what I mean. But keep that belly button pulling in tight. So it's a squeeze. We're doing it with such control that if we wanted to, we could freeze. But let's do four more. Four, lift, three, lift. Get ready to freeze. Next time, freeze here. Whoa, use a chair if you need it. Touch your toe down if you want. And let's freeze on that other leg. Ooh, it's harder for me on this leg. Probably this because this leg isn't as strong as that one. I've had a couple little boo boos on this one. So I have to pay attention and not push it too far. Woo, how are you doing? Do we have time and energy and desire to do this one more time? Briefly, behind our chair, work in our hips. If so, you can get behind your chair, hip width stance. If you want to be in your chair, bump. We're going to do this with a little longer leg hip abduction. So just a little march two, three, wide and low, lift. Pull the navel in. Dorsiflex your foot. Make your leg look long and strong like a golf putter. And the head of the golf putter is your shoe. Good. Down to three. Lift or march to three. Now we're going to do it at tempo. And then we're going to try it very small and faster, but four more at tempo. Three, two, Ready? Step two, three. Step two, three. Then. I kind of feel like a penguin. Or you get lost. <laughs> How you doing? One, two, three, lift. One, two, three, lift. Four more. Four, three. Woo! I'm glad that's over. <laughs> I felt like I was maybe a little bit closer to an eight than a seven. But that's okay, because I'm still able to talk. How about you? Are you ready to do another set of super duper strength work? This time we're gonna have a ball, y'all. <laughs> Before we do, let's let's just take our time getting seated.
squats. Super duper body weight strength exercise. I know I sound like a broken record. But ask your doctor. You know, when we go to the doctor a lot of times, we don't talk about the, the really important medicines that we get to choose to give ourselves every day, like good nutrition or good exercise. So have that discussion, or better yet, write it down when you go to see your doctor for a well visit. That way you'll have more time to talk about the things that are helping you stay well rather than the things that are making you feel not so well. And consider taking a close friend or advocate. Of course, at this time, it would be naturally best if it was someone that you lived with. Because you'll be close. So here's to your health, and here's to preventative, good public health. I need, I am shook, so I was gonna check my music, but go ahead and get a sip of water. Mmm, that's so good. Okay. We're gonna do a little bit of abdominal work, a little bit of hip work, and then we'll end up with an option to stand and work a little bit more on our hips and our balance. Using our ball. Salsa. There we go. Sitting close to the edge of your seat, sitting tall will allow you to move your leg out to the side. Okay? And what we're going to do here is use the ball against the outside of the thigh. You can position yourself so that it's against more closer to your hip. If it's closer to your hip, it's going to be easier to slide that foot out to the side. And depending on your limb lengths and your um, comfortable positioning with the spine upright, you might be able to bring it closer to the edge of the knee. But we're pushing with our arm using the chest and the shoulder stabilizers, upper back and those rotator cuff stabilizers as we push against the ball. And that strengthens our hip because our hip abductors are strengthening against our shoulder stabilizers. Do your best and exhale each time. Maybe just two more. But we're keeping that foot just barely sliding over the floor. Take it to the other side. Good set. Now if the left shoulder or arm aches, you can just do that. You can also use no ball and push against your leg. Closer to the knee is harder, closer to the hip is a little easier. Pick your favorite position. You could also be adding grip strength by squeezing that ball each time you pushed against the leg. But breathing is not an option, it's mandatory. Exhale as you squeeze the air out of the ball. Sitting tall is important. Just being aware of your position of your body is already a good thing to hone in your toolkit. Being more aware of where you are in, in space, that proprioception is an important part of our balance equation. All right, I've had enough of that, how about you? Woo! I felt that. Later on, right after this, some abdominal work, we could do that again if we choose standing. But come to the edge of your seat, pull your navel in, tuck your tailbone under, and lean back. Also tuck your chin slightly. Keep both feet on the ground for now. Feel that pulling in at the navel like you're zipping up tight traffic. We're going to do a bit of a rainbow. You can start with a little rainbow. If the back of your chair gets in the way, you can come a little further forward. Tuck your elbow. But Rotate your body, slow and control, just as far as feels good. And do try to keep your head in line with your heart as much as you can. If you wanted to add challenge, you could lift that up, 
I'm gonna be a bigger rainbow. Leaning back, pulling the navel in, and breathing all the while. If you wanted to add challenge, you could bring that opposite knee up. But always get that opposite leg back to the ground before you lift the other one. Oh, this is hard. Oh, nobody said it was going to be easy. I said simple, but simple isn't always easy. Oof. How are you doing on the bottom of gas? We call that momentary muscular fatigue. Like I feel like, ooh, a little dull, burny achiness in the abdominal muscles and a little bit here in the thighs. And that's when it's when the exercise is making a change to your body. Well, let's do one more strength exercise for our abdominals before we move on. This one, I call it a thinker abdominal exercise. And then we're going to be pushing down on the ball. You stay facing forward so you can see what we're doing. But I'm going to turn to the side so you can see what I'm trying to get you folks to do. Sit tall, place the ball somewhere on your lap. Place your elbows or your the, just below the elbow joint. Don't let your shoulders hunch. Push them down. And squeeze the air out of that ball. Pull the belly button in towards the spine. This is a very small range of motion and it doesn't look like much, but I'm working really hard here to keep the shoulders from hunching up and pulling the navel in, shortening and strengthening those rectus and abdominis muscles. Just a couple more. Yeah, just like that. I, I, I'm actually working up a sweat today. <laughs> All right, one last hip abduction balance strengthener. If you don't want to stand up, you're going to do what we did in the first set. If you do want to stand up, take your time. We'll start on the right. So, check your area. Keep that chair where your peripheral vision can see it and touch it. Best posture, like you've got a glass of water on your head. Place the ball on the side, outside of that right leg. Peel your right toe off the ground and just see if you can stand tall as you push into that hip with the right hand on the right ball. And then abduct. So I've got my hand just barely touching the chair. I recommend keeping it right there where every once in a while just a fingernail maybe touches. It's not going to take too many of these before I wear out. I get momentary muscular fatigue in my standing leg. How about you? Because to keep that hip stable, you're strengthening the deep, deep part of the hip muscle, the rotator cuff, just like we're doing with the shoulder. Good news, this is our last standing strength exercise. So situate yourself and get ready to do the left side. Make sure you can touch the chair. Balance that imaginary glass of water. Peel that left toe up off of the ground. See if you can just stand on one foot, pushing with your left hand and the left hip, and then add that abduction. Keep your right hand very close to the chair so you can use it. If you feel like you need a balance check, you can also put your foot down and stop whatever you like. But challenge yourself. Building strength makes better balance. Practicing balance makes better balance as well. But strength is a big part of it. Hey, if you are already standing, don't sit down yet. Let's take this opportunity to stretch the outer hip that we just strengthened and the calves because it's a little easier standing. So I'm going to show you, but it's kind of hard, a really good stretch for the outside of the hip. Usually I just show you by standing here and pushing out into the hip, maybe crossing over that kickstand. But if you have tightness on the outer hip and the outside of the knee, you can get up against the wall, fairly close, and then just put 
put your weight in the leg closest to the wall and let your hip flow towards the wall. You could cross over with that kickstand. You could adjust your position and it allows you to use your body weight without any jerky or uh, bouncing to get a little bit more of an effective outer hip ITV stretch. ITV means iliotibial band. So you could do the other way too. Start to standing tall and then put your weight in the leg closest to the wall and let your hip drift toward the wall. You can bring that other leg across. And just give it a moment, maybe 30 seconds, to re-lengthen that much more pliable, pliable, thick band of material. Oh, and we can get our calves stretched out much more effectively standing as well. So no bouncing, but you can use your wall again for this calf and Achilles heel stretch. Or Achilles tendon is what I meant. Gradually walk one leg back. Keep the heel pasted on the ground and lean into that gently. Nothing should hurt. Give it a couple of deep cleansing breaths. Oh, that feels good. You can even rock back and put your weight into that hind hip quarter and bend the knee, keeping the heel on the ground to get a slightly different calf stretch. Ease out of it. Remember, no um, sudden or bouncy movements. They're counterproductive, maybe even painful or, or injurious. We don't want that. So leaning forward, other leg, straight at the knee, heel on the ground. Couple of nice deep breaths. And then ease your weight back, shifting as if you're sitting on a little chair, bending that knee. Keeping the heel pasted on the ground and ease out. Ooh. All right. So a good exercise program as you segue to your chair, take your time. You don't even have to do squat. <laughs> a good exercise program, of course, should benefit you. But it's really important that the benefits outweigh the risks. So one risk is, is injury. A good exercise program is reducing your risk of musculoskeletal injuries by increasing stability around the joints with strength. Um, it's reducing your risk of cardiovascular disease and cognitive dementia by strengthening your heart and lungs and your circulatory system. Those are just two examples, but you know, some of the really important reasons for exercise, as we get another sip of water, are it keeps our overall physical and mental health so that we can better avoid having other types of injuries or illnesses. Yes, our immune system is strengthened by regular exercise and a good diet. And when has it ever been more important than now? Woo! So here's to our health. Here's to your health. I hope you're staying healthy. Mm -hmm. Another thing exercise is really good for is it helps our capacity to, to better breathe and to reduce stress. It's been shown that a good balance of some aerobic or cardiovascular activity with some strength activity, with some relaxation, breathing, stretching activity, give, give our body and mind and spirit the best balance. And we do need, in that order, the most of aerobic activity 
and then a little less time need to be spent on doing muscular strength. It just happens quicker. We don't need to do it as long. And then it doesn't take as long, but you're certainly able to stretch or breathe or be mindful and relax longer if you choose. So that's what we're about to do. We're just going to breathe for a few minutes. See if we can slow our body down. So I'm going to invite you to sit back in your chair. Get that ball out of the way. Just relax. Think, maybe do a body scan and start at the tip of the crown of your head. And just bring your focus slowly, gradually with each breath down to your face and your neck and then down to your shoulders and arms and then to your chest and your belly and then to your hips and your thighs and right down to your tips of your toes and let every effortless energizing breath soothe and relax each part so you can lower your gaze or close your eyes as you inhale as if you're smelling your favorite scent your favorite aroma exhale as if you're blowing out a candle making a wish Inhale, pay attention to wherever you might feel tightness. And as you exhale, choose to let it go, to roll off your shoulders, down your back. With your next breath, bring your attention a little lower, noticing any discomfort or unease in your torso, perhaps your heart, your lungs, your major organs, and just soothe them. Take your time, each breath, filling your lungs from the bottom to the top like a wave of fresh fuel for your body and mind. Each exhale an opportunity to release, let go of stuff you don't need, tension, emotional baggage, be in your body right now. Sometimes it'll cramp up or the hamstring. Let the weight of that 
left knee drift down to feel an elongation of this hip flexor complex and pause. Inhale, stretch in the crown of your head up and your arm too if it feels good. If it does feel good, even a little opening of your spine. And then when you're ready to exhale, stretch through that left side of your body leaning into your chair back. Remember, let that left leg be dead weight, just drift to the ground. You can hinge at the elbow and enjoy a tricep stretch. Pat yourselves on the back for completing another exercise session. Yay, you! Yay, team! Team Yellow Springs! And anybody else who helps, happens to be out there, Take your time to turn to the other side. Hinge forward a bit, easing that leg back. Ooh. So, with that right hip off of the front edge, let the knee drift down. Inhale, filling those lungs from the bottom to the top. A little gentle arch if it feels good. Remember, if your shoulder doesn't like that extension, bring it in, soothe it, shorten it, and stretch towards your chair back when you're ready with your exhale. Remind that right knee to drift down and that right foot to relax. Hinge at the elbow. Enjoy a tricep stretch. And another pat on the back if you can. Okay, facing forward, final stretch for these trapezius muscles and the chest opening. So take a nice deep, relaxing breath through your nose if you can, opening your hands, your arms, your shoulders, your chest. Lift your heart. Ah, relax and find a little place where you can comfortably just latch on to the chair legs. Keep all four legs on the floor. Don't tilt, but lean forward, lengthening your spine. As you inhale, feel those lungs fill your chest. And as you exhale, let the right ear drift down to the right shoulder. Take another breath here. As you fill your lungs, you'll feel that stretch on the left develop a bit. Ah. Sit tall with your in-breath, and when you're ready, exhale, and let the left ear drift to the left shoulder. That felt good. I hope it felt good to you, too. I'm going to put my mask back on as I get closer to you, <laughs> at least kind of, sort of, and remind you, whenever you're out and about around people, Wearing your mask is one way to say, I care about you. So keep it safe and simple. The mask gives us a little bit of protection, but it certainly, just like our exercise program, helps benefits outweigh the risks for me and you. So keep it simple and safe. Bye for now.